You're still watching Ways. Now, the World Refugee Day is observed on June 20th every year. It was first recognized by the United Nations. This event marks the courage, strength, and determination of all the men, women, and children who were forced to flee from their homeland under threat of conflict and violence. People honor the courage of millions of refugees across the world on this day. Organizations such as Amnesty International and the International Rescue Committee get involved actively in the various activities of the day. So we pray for all refugees all over the world and we send our love to them. This is really, really close to home for us in Nigeria because mm -hmm. IDPs. of northern Nigeria. Insurgency and, and they all They don't that. see them as refugees maybe because it's not from one country to the other. Yeah, right? but they, they are. are. Once, yes, you're, yes. 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 Once you have reasons to leave your home, yes. to run to win another state, to yes. another city for shelter, mm -hmm. you're, you're a refugee. Mm -hmm. And it's really you're a painful, displaced, painful hurtful place to be. Yeah. They are refugees. Yeah. In their own country. country. That's, mm -hmm. that's a sad part. That's, that's more painful. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. All right, ladies. So who's going to go first with their story? I think, um, Sansi, you should go first because okay. you have updates for us. Yes, I do have updates. On uh, May 22nd, I think, um, we had the very sad news of um, how OWA, the first year uh, University of um, Benin student, was murdered, raped, and, and then murdered, which was a very sad story that started um, a protest for justice for OWA and, and other ladies. So, and then along the line, they, the um, a suspect was arrested that gave a certain account that everybody went bonkers on social media and calling out on the girl and saying all sorts of terrible things against her. But right now, oh, there is an update on her autopsy. Now, the Edo State Attorney General for Justice, Professor Yinka Omorube, said that um, the autopsy results are out and the the thing is, she was a virgin. Like, she wasn't pregnant, which is, like, she completely disputed what the suspect said. She was yeah. not pregnant. She was a virgin, as at the time, uh, 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 she was raped and then sadly murdered. And also, um, um, in, in, in the article, the parents, were, they had to speak to the family of their reaction when this whole thing happened. It was, it was so heartbreaking for them. And I can completely imagine when you know a person, you know how honest they are, and then someone just gives a false account and social media did not even bother to wait for results they just pounced you on it when, and just when, tore this girl apart you know you know when we saw when i saw the story on our group chat mm -hmm. immediately i said this is too hard for me to believe i'm not going to believe it we have to see the autopsy and he has to come out as pregnant that like i really do not because quite a number you know the um, the, the alleged um, culprit of course they would want to push it you know, just to scandalize, mm -hmm. you know, just to make a scandal out of it, then to deflect from what the they have done. The real issue. From yeah. the real issue. So, but immediately I still, when I, I saw still, that, I, still I didn't would like it. to understand what the update on the pastor is because, you know, the allegations was that she was pregnant for the pastor and the pastor so paid them. He's been displaced anyway. No, no, now he's been displaced, but is he still at large? Because there are still questions we need to go. You know, the the, was the report said that he was at large with his okay, wife. Then yes. that's questionable. So those are the things that, would, now that they have come out with the autopsy that she wasn't pregnant and all of that, I think, you know, it will also be nice for us to know what the update on the pastor and his wife. He are. could have run out of fear. Yeah, it's it could, possible. Eh? So that, that's why I'm saying that it would be no, good to have a complete overlook of the situation. Oh, I, I, I didn't believe yeah. it anyway. I just yeah. didn't. I mean, so, I, I, and for people who would say, why would she go to church to study? Listen, I was in school. I don't know about every other person, but I know I was a good girl in school. And so one of the places we would go to study is either in the garden, especially during exam periods, either uh, in the garden or in the church. There's like this small student fellowship center. We would go there and study, and it's very peaceful. But, so, but coming from Nigeria, that we don't really have public libraries mm. how can you Ex thank so, you that, that's i think that's thank a, you. a bit insensitive anyway yeah. to my story yeah. mm -hmm. well this has never happened i have two stories quickly. <laughs> so Shoot. quickly i have to take it because i was really torn between both stories mm -hmm. the first one is about who you know echoing the impact the negative impact covid19 has had on women and i could relate to the story because now most, I think women are, are, are the most hit by this because most especially children are not back in school, mm -hmm. but right. we are back at work. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how Balance do you care for juggle. your, and particularly because of homeschooling. Mm. Right. So how do you juggle, you still have to go to work. For me, for instance, I don't have a help and I have a toddler and oh, I still wow. go to work. 
and I'm still scared because when I take her to work, she plays with everybody. Mm. You know, so now I have to, I don't have to, go, I can't go to work anymore. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. most of my work involves going to my physical office to do a lot of research. Yeah. So I'm battling with that, you know, mm -hmm. then domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Then you still have the whole house chores to do right. and all that. So I, I really, really think. Well, especially it. for people yes, who don't have help. Then yeah. my second story is about this, which is very, very unusual. There's this particular manak in Oshun State who has a free school mm -hmm. for children, for the underprivileged children. Mm -hmm. It's Beautiful. purely residential, free books, uniforms, food, free burden. Wow. He takes children, um, I think, Oba, Bola, Rewain, Okay, La, in Ocean State, which I think is a laudable, um, yeah. uh, laudable thing, and I think it should be commended, and people should Please um, support support That's him. Because you know what? This is hundred and about thirty one student purely from his own resources. Mm -hmm. Quite frankly, this is what I think Ned Moko should be doing and not hmm. buying another jet and having hmm. a family picture in the jet. Uh, listen, I'm sorry, but somebody has to say the truth. Because mm -hmm. he recently got a new jet. And I mean, <laughs> somebody is, what have you done? I mean, I honestly I haven't researched what he, he has may, done, he but do I completely it. agree that charity. he should. Because I'm well, you know the funny thing is, I don't know. Let me. Why I say that, I, I would somehow agree, agree with to what Sanzi is saying. You know why? Um, so, COVID came together, and they they put out. I think I was listening to, or I saw it somewhere. Whether twelve, twenty something billion so far they've raised. So this, the truth is, we have billionaires in this country. We do. Yeah. You A understand? Lot of them. So, can we, after this COVID thing is over, can, can we, we focus discussion? on two things, please? We're not beg we're not asking education for too much. Education and health. Education and health. I'm telling so you. So let us invest in the educational sector. This is a monarch that doesn't have a yeah. visible yeah. Um, source of income, and he could do this. Do you know the number? of students in america that on scholarship yeah hmm. so let me quickly sure. take my own story it's quite a funny one but the truth is that everybody i think has experienced this to some point a chinese man you know according to the punch says the man gained a hundred kg during the five months lockdown in wuhan um china when i saw this picture i said whoa but you know the funny thing is that I could really, really relate. This man is a bit the will I call me a young man. And he's twenty six. Twenty six years old. Years old. What? You know the you right? know my take on it? Yeah. I think he slipped into depression and started binge eating. Well, they said he had a tendency okay. of he's on Being the big obese? side. Oh. Okay. Yeah, he had a tendency. So but you know, before the lockdown he could walk around, you know, but when the lockdown happened that you couldn't oh. even leave your house, he was always eating. You know, I experienced it. One day I just, woke up. I just looked at the mirror. All my clothes could not fit anymore. Wow. I said, what is this? What? What is happening? So <laughs> deliberately, consciously now, I'm not eating anymore. You know, if not because of the, um, my, uh, my health, uh, what's it called, last week. I wanted to start a detox pro program last week because when I saw Uti and Nasa, I said, I was happening. Everybody so is gaining jealous. weight. <laughs> everybody is so gaining jealous weight. And of the both of them. Yeah, everybody is gaining weight and you guys are just looking all sucked in and all of that so <laughs> this yeah. story is actually quite relatable and i think everybody needs to be cautious because right now he had to in fact they had to take him to the hospital he was almost at the point of death but thankfully they've taken him out of that zone of death because you know when you have too much fat in your body again it's another health complication yeah. So let us so all that be means cautious. I think prior to that, he was weighing about 400 pounds. Yeah. So, let, wow. so the yeah. additional 400 would make him like 500 pounds. Like it's and crazy. you know what? Oh, I, can co I completely, um, I mean, what's the word again? I can't I remember. <laughs> yeah, I can relate. Right. Because during the lockdown, for some reason, I became obsessed with peanut butter. So I licked like three jars mm -hmm. in, in five days. Okay. Me, I developed a good relationship with <laughs> Mixed fruit, raisins. Okay. Oh, that's healthy. And that's that's healthy. That's healthy. Oh. Peanut butter is... <laughs> but anything in excess of calories then becomes, yeah, becomes a problem. Absolutely. True. So please, that's let's true. pay attention to our health. It's very important. Mm -hmm. All right, so Pascal will join us right after the break to discuss money, morals, and millennials. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.